Okay, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to this webinar from OptiWave uh, in the series of webinars. Uh, this webinar is about uh, multi-core fiber design analysis, and it is a joint uh, webinar between two products, Opti System and Opti Mod. Uh, we, uh, the team who are working on this presentation, is Amin Khorshid Ahmad. Uh, he is an optical scientist. Scott Newman, who is the project lead for Opti Mod and uh, myself, uh, I'm a VP at Optical Systems uh, at OptiWave. Uh, now the, the webinar will be two parts. One part is the talk about OptiSystem and then the other part, my colleague uh, Scott is gonna be presenting uh, the OptiMod uh, part and then we go back again to live uh, demo. So uh, the sequence of the uh, presentation would be first, we're gonna talk about special division multiplexing for optical communication. And then we're gonna talk about multi-core fibers. Uh, and uh, then we're gonna talk about OptiSystem features. We're gonna talk about single mode multi-core fibers. Uh, then I'm gonna pass the, uh, the presentation to uh, Scott where he was gonna speak about OptiMode features and the FEM solver, Victor Finite Element uh, mod, Method Solver. And then we're gonna he gonna show some examples designing uh, multi-core fibers in OptiMode uh, for either uh, air has all assisted um, uh, multi-core fibers or graded index trenched assisted core core fibers. And then I'm gonna uh, do the uh, part uh, talking about how to use these uh, results uh, obtained uh, from either OptiSystem or OptiMode to uh, make a signal transmission modeling using OptiSystem and then gonna live, give a live demonstration and we are open then after that for question and answers. Okay, so first thing here, we're gonna talk about the um, system capacity bear optical fiber. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, this from this reference taken in 2017, uh, where uh, the trend between 1980 to two, expectation to 2030, uh, how's the system capacity per fiber is, is, is happening. As you can see in the early ages between 80s and 90s, there is electrical uh, time division multiplexing mainly uh, used. And as you, the green arrow here shows the uh, development and the uh, industry implementation, while the uh, arrow here in, in yellowish, uh, it's the research uh, uh, progress. In, in 1990, when the EDF is invented and optical amplifier WDM, then they moves to this region where start to, to implement the 10 gigabit per second and then move around 40 gigabit per second and 100 gigabit per second. And there's another jump here when, when uh, the uh, 400G or 200G uh, and uh, advanced modulation schemes came up and uh, digital coherent systems came up. And then after that, uh, we uh, reach kind of limit here around 2020, where uh, a solution would be special uh, space division multiplexing. So, uh, in in uh, as you can see here, the transmission progress is depends on using, for example, single uh, multiplication uh, wavelength wavelength division multiplexing and dense division uh, WDM, and also use polarization multiplexing to to exploit uh, and transmit more data. And then the digital coherent system with the QAM, 16 QAM, 64 QAM, and 256 QAM enables higher and higher data rate. But still, we reach, as we saw here, it's kind of physical limit where uh, the special division multiplexing has to uh, kind of be a solution where we can uh, use different modes on a single uh, core, or we can use multi cores to transmit uh, single mode or multi mode uh, uh, data on these modes. Okay. Now, uh, if we are thinking about single mode, uh, single core uh, fiber, then we can use the uh, few modes fiber to, to enable the special division multiplexing. And uh, the other option is to use multi cores, but these multi cores could be single mode or could be multi mode uh, options. Okay. So uh, you can transmit bare core a single mode or you can transmit pair core a multi. Uh, mode and each each uh, mode would carry a different data rate or a, a same data rate. 
Now, the core design, uh, it could be a step index uh, uh, refractive index profile or could be a graded index refractive index profile. So the options is, uh, uh, is, 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 is there for the, the designer. And then the design of the multi-court could be assisted with a trench or to, to control the leakage, or you can have air hole assisted. So all of that we're gonna be addressing in, uh, in this uh, webinar today. Now, this uh, schematic here shows you the, the uh, kind of the layout of this course, and you can see here kind of zoom picture where the, the air holes are surrounding the, the cladding of the fiber, this is the core, and the refractive index profile, as you can see here, we have step index, and then you have the core refractive index and so on. So we, we can have uh, homogeneous profiles. We can talk about it later on or, or non-homogeneous profile for refractive index, as well as we can, again, we can have trench assisted or no trench assisted. So all of these options is, 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 can be designed in, in Opti mode, uh, fiber and Opti system as well. Uh, okay, so move on here. We're gonna start talking about the uh, features of Opti system. So mainly OptiSystem is a software package where you can uh, design uh, optical and optoelectronics uh, uh, com systems or subsystems, uh, and you can uh, make a simulation, prototyping, uh, uh, using these comprehensive components and libraries available in OptiSystem. So we have over 550 components representing the different um, uh, devices or modules in the uh, in the domain of op uh, photonics and opti optoelectronics systems. Now, uh, also we offer in OptiSystem a large libraries for temporal and spectral visualization capabilities in the optical domain, electric electrical domain, as well as, well as the uh, binary and memory uh, representation of the signals. Uh, OptiSystem also allows the users to co-simulate uh, software back like software written in, in different languages like uh, Python, MATLAB, C++, uh, Scilab into components where users can do their own designs in case they wanted to explore some additional uh, features or functionality which is not available in OptiSystem. Uh, OptiWave software also interwork with other software packages uh, in OptiWave product. And uh, this is kind of example we are doing today with the inter uh, working between Opti system and Opti mod softwares. Uh, Opti system also, one of the important part of it is we have a huge example library, uh, which addresses many applications and uh, users, when they download the software, uh, they have access to this example library, which addresses uh, uh, like too many applications from optical communication to sensors to to uh, visible light communication or free space optics communication, microwave photonics and so on. Now the example library, as you can see here, it's, you can download it under, as, and this is kind of typical examples of the different uh, di directories, which has examples, as you can see here, on advanced modulation, on dispersion compensation, on microwave photonics, on transceivers and transmitters and so on. Now in OptiSystem, uh, currently we have three components uh, in OptiSystem which you can access them and uh, get uh, your own design of um, the multi-core uh, fiber designs. So you can have uh, uh, different uh, refractive index profiles, you can have trench, at this moment in, in Opti system, we only support uh, single mode and uh, multi-core uh, fiber applications uh, because we are using here in this software uh, empirical formulas. However, uh, as we're gonna show you in the webinar today, my, my colleague Scott is gonna uh, demonstrate using Opti mode for designing the, um, the multi-core fiber for single mode application or for multi-mode applications uh, with trench, as you can see here, we have trench uh, uh, characteristics or without trench as air assisted holes. Uh, now in the components, as you can see here, we can uh, look into the crosstalk from any core to any core, as well as we can study the effect of bending radius on the crosstalk uh, in, in any, any core. Uh, the same thing, we can study also the effect of the, the distance between the centers of the core, we call it core pitch, and um, that is also available in an Opti uh, 
system at currently for single mode application. This is quickly to show you the refractor index profile and the, the, the way how the parameters are specified. We have the NP, which is like core P here, and this is core Q. Uh, this is refractive index of the core, and this is the diameter of the core, and this is uh, the distance between the uh, core and the trench, and uh, center of the core and trench, and this is between the, the other end of the trench, so it can give you the width of the trench. Uh, the refractive index prof uh, refractive index is, is um, kind of uh, through these formulas you can correlate it to the uh, uh, refractive index difference between the we call it delta one between the core and the cladding and delta two between the the cladding and the uh, the trench. Um, now. Uh, the possibility to simul uh, simulate an optic system, we can simulate homogeneous, uh, homogeneous uh, uh, multi-core fibers where the NP and NQ are equal, or we can have them different. So we have uh, in, uh, heterogeneous, and also we can have homogeneous with a trench assisted or with no trench. So we can, uh, you can, you, the user can uh, design the multi-core without a trench if he wants to. And with heterogeneous, as I mentioned, we can do with, with the trench and without a trench. Uh, and also we can have, for example, uh, a homogeneous, but one core with a trench and the other core with no trench. So, or heterogeneous, one core with trench and other uh, core with no trench. So you have lots of flexibility in the Opti system design. Now, in Opti mode, uh, as, as Scott is going to show you, you can have uh, much more flexibility to add up uh, the air holes and so on into the 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 fiber as well as to support the multi-mode operation in this kind of formulas we have uh, empirical formulas as we can show you now we use the couple mode uh, cover power theory uh, uh, to address the crosstalk for between the multi cores and the analytical expressions of the average coupling coefficient based on exponential integration function are used uh, the coupled power equations are given by these formulas, as you can see here, and where the uh, power P is the average power in the core P, and the HPQ here is the uh, coupling coefficient between the, the core P and the Q for certain mode. Uh, the single mode fiber component, as you can see it here, uh, you can have the different parameters entered here uh, with, uh, you can, have the fiber length, you can have the number of cores, the bending radius, you can have the multi-core structure parameters, the trench refractive index, and so on. So lots of parameters and flexibility you can have. Now, all the theory, you can access it through the data sheet. If you press on the help button here, you can have the data sheet, which explains to you the, the parameters and the ranges of the parameters and so on. Now, the definition of the crosstalk uh, between the cores, as you can see here, we can we can have core uh, I and core J here, or we, whereas the power is going to be P I and P J after certain distance is calculated, and the crosstalk is the ratio between P J to P uh, I, and this is uh, the crosstalk for core J to core I, uh, and the, uh, the 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 crosstalk as well as can be simplified or used in this equation here using the coupling coefficient. Now the Crosstalk parameter here, we have an example, like for example, three. This is the way how the Opti system will display the results, where uh, you're going to have the total crosstalk in each, each core. So we have three cores here. Uh, the total crosstalk for, from core two and core three into core one, this is the total, and this is the total crosstalk from core one and core three, and this is the total crosstalk from core one and core two. Now you can see this is kind of a array here, a matrix where it shows you the crosstalk. For example, this is a crosstalk of two to, to one, and this is three to one. Now the cores here, as you can see, they are kind of uh, on the same line. That's why core three has a very low crosstalk compared to core two, which is closer to core one, and so on. Now here, this is this parameter is called uh, a kind of uh, a calculation. A verification that you see that all the parameters are set properly. Uh, you have a pass whenever you have in this matrix here zeros. If you have any uh, parameter here, a negative one, it means you have a failure. And this is related could be to the settings which you are using in the in the component. This is an example in the other component, which is uh, investigating the bending, gross, uh, bending radius effect 
on the crosstalk. And uh, this component, as you can see, is similar to the first component. Uh, and in this component, you have all these parameters. You can set them up and then sweep the uh, the, the radius or bending radius. And this is uh, bending radius, as you can see here in the, the output uh, view of the component. You can uh, have it as a uh, the effect of a crosstalk on certain uh, core um, from the other core when you have bending rates varying from, for example, in this example, between 0.3 and about 0.5 uh, mic, uh, micrometer or millimeter. Okay, now next is uh, we can study again the effect of the uh, pitch period and between the, the two cores. And as you can see here is also, we can display the, the crosstalk for a certain core uh, as function of the changing the distance between the centers of the uh, other core. Now, um, in, in multi-core application here, uh, we will use, uh, as, as I mentioned, and we're gonna demonstrate today, uh, OptiMode to design the multi-core uh, multi fiber, and the, the coupling coefficient will be uh, calculated for these modes, and then the Eventually, we take these results and we plug them into optic system to uh, to simulate the uh, transmission of the signals. At this time, I'm going to pass the presentation to my colleague uh, Scott to uh, to continue the presentation on the Opti mode. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, welcome, everyone. This is uh, Scott Newman, and as Ahmed indicated, I'm going to be going through the OptiMode features. So we're going to go through the features initially, and then there are three different designs we're going to take a look at and compare to literature-based examples. There we go. So the OptiMode product takes a cross-sectional slice of a fiber, a waveguide, or some other kind of structure and we'll actually calculate the mode of that structure and provide data for that. There are a number of mode solvers available when using the OptiMode product. There's a finite difference, there's an ADI-based method, but for these kind of structures, these multi-core structures, the best one to use is the vector finite element mode solver, which provides the ability to model lossy materials, dispersive, and anisotropic. So, when you're dealing with this, the, this particular mode solver has a lot of functionality and a lot of parameters to adjust. So when we see the image on the left, this is for the, the general settings or more specifically the mesh settings, really. And the vector finite element mode method uses a triangular mesh. So it takes the Cartesian grid that, that would normally be discretized and it will calculate a triangular mesh and use that. So these settings where you control the min angle, the min edge, the max edge, the max triangle area, these are used to fine tune your mesh, to increase the triangles to, to minimize computational resources or to decrease the triangle size to try and get better accuracy. The other thing you can do with this mesh is you can control whether it is material independent or not. So if we look at the right side where I'm touching on the advanced mesh settings, we can actually change the type of mesh. It can either be uniform, so the system calculates it, or it can be material dependent. So it will actually take the refractive index values into consideration when it calculates the mesh for you. The, it uses uh, the element order for the, the solver. The other thing that I do want to point out, I don't believe I have it in the other uh, slides, is this mode index estimate. This is an important thing to, to set. When you're doing mode calculations, you may or may not calculate any number of modes, and they might be not be at the particular mode you're looking for. So if you have an idea of what the modal index should be for the mode you're looking for, it's best to put that in there as the estimate. It, makes the the process much more efficient. The other thing you have to concern yourself with when you're running simulations is your boundary conditions. So there are two that apply to these kind of structures, three but primarily two. 
this particular one that we're going to talk about first is the EPML or the uniaxial perpendicular match layer. So this one applies a boundary condition that gradually introduces loss. So you're able to truncate out your domain without uh, it necessarily reflecting off that domain. This is important when you're trying to calculate the effective index of bent fibers. You want you don't want hard boundary conditions that will cause some kind of reflection. So you're going to use your, your UPML. And once you set your UPML, you can change the properties, the thickness, the, the order of the grading. The other primary boundary condition you're going to be using in these cases is symmetric boundary conditions. This allows us to reduce the simulation domain. So if you know your structure is perfectly symmetric about the y-axis, you're going to use a symmetric boundary condition. To, to put that into place. And you can also use those symmetries to sort out modes. If your mode is a monopole, if you're looking for a monopole mode, you can set up your symmetry so you're only going to get modes that are properly symmetric about that. Uh, I did, sorry, I did put it in here. So we can actually put in um, modes close to the user specified. So that would be index estimate. For this is this feature is particularly powerful for multi-core fibers or complex designs. Simple designs, you're not necessarily going to use it. But within the OptiMode product, as with a number of the other products, we provide scripting capabilities through visual basic scripting. And we have user-defined parameters. So for example, if your core, you know your core diameters, you know your core periods. You can set those up as parameters, which we see here in the, the slide on the, the image on the right, where a number of the parameters from the diagrams that we've seen earlier, they're set up here. The VB script is used for actually generating the structure, creating those cores, positioning the cores. It makes things much easier, particularly when you have multiple cores rotated about a geometry. The other thing this provides is simulation control. So instead of doing a, a generic parameter sweep on one parameter, you can set that up using for loops in the Visual Basic scripting. So it, it, it's a powerful utility and is particularly useful when you're dealing with more complicated structures. When you, when you design a structure, say for example, you're not familiar with Visual Basic scripting, you can generate part of your structure and then you can actually tell the product to generate the Visual Basic code for that structure. And then from there, you can modify it. That's probably the easiest way for learning things. The other thing you can do is export this data using Visual Basic. You can export it to NDA files, which are the results files for these products, or you can result. Um, export them to files in whatever format you like. So the first structure we're going to take a look at here is an air hole assisted multi-core fiber. So what we can see is it's an array of structures rotated about in a six-fold symmetry, the hexagonal pattern, and each of these unit cells is in itself a hex hexagon. So we have a core and then we have the air holes around it. We have some of the parameters here on the left. So our background is, is the silica cladding, and we have the air holes, and we have some of the structural geometry positioned here. So the core pitch, the actual diameter of the core, the diameter of the air holes, as well as the pitch for those air holes. This is taken from the Sakamoto paper from 2013. And this is the actual structure, the refractive index values shown within the product. So you, you, different colors represent different uh, materials. So we see we have the actual fiber, that uh, silica. Then we have a jacket. And then we have the PML, which introduces that, that loss to, to represent a uh, boundary. As we see here, we've, uh, we're showing the triangular mesh that we mentioned from the vector finite element mode, or the, the FEM mode solver. 
And you can see that I've actually used symmetry along the y-axis so that we only have to discretize half of this structure. We will solve the mode based on this and uh, understand that the bottom half is still there. To give you a better sense of what this array looks like, we're going to zoom in a bit. And you can see how the mesh adapts to the refractive index and provides higher resolution where it's required and a bit coarser where, where you can get away with it. To building the structures for one thing, the next thing is you want to get that information out of there. The information that the OptiMode Analyzer product provides is the modal index, the effective area, and the mode profiles. This information can be extracted either manually through the OptiMode Analyzer or it can be extracted, as I said, through the VB script uh, functionality. You, by doing so, you can use the mode profiles to generate the coupling coefficients. You have modal indexes for where it's needed. And this information can then be used in the equation that uh, equations that Ahmed was explaining to calculate your crosstalk. So we can calculate our loss this mode is going to experience in the fiber, and we can calculate the, the crosstalk between the ports. So this is a mode solution of a single one of the cores being excited. So we're, we're exciting the top right one there. And the second image is where we have excited the, where we're looking at the mode primarily for this far left core, but the fiber is being set to add a bend. So we can actually see the effects of bending this waveguide. The bending radius for this particular example is five millimeters. Okay, so extracting that data and putting it into the calculations, we can actually plot the crosstalk as a function of the air hole diameter. So changing the, uh, the little b in this diagram. So this was done for three different pitches, four pitches, which is the capital D. We did it for 30, 32 and a half, and 35 microns, and we can see how the crosstalk drops as the air hole diameter gets larger. Similarly, we can plot the leakage loss, which is the imaginary part of the effective index of this mode. And similarly, that loss drops as the air hole diameter increases, which is all well and good, but it's better to compare it to experimental data. So this image on the left is the crosstalk and the leakage loss plotted on the same graph over a air hole diameter range of three to seven microns. And this is compared to the experimental results reported in the, the paper that we, we previously mentioned, the Sakamoto paper. And we can see excellent agreement in terms of the plot, the two plots both for, for crosstalk and for the, uh, the loss, the leakage loss. To hammer that down a bit more uh, quantitative, we can see here the results from the measure, which is from the, the actual paper, and from the OptiWave simulation. So the effective area of the modes are, are in strong agreement with crosstalk at a wavelength of 1.625, it's an excellent agreement, as is the wavelength cut off. So that's the comparison of that paper. The other thing we can take a look at, still with the same design, is bending loss. So we're going to scan the bending radius from 3 to 10 microns, and we can monitor the loss as we go through those bends. And if we zoom in on that, to the three to six millimeter range and compare it to the experimental results, we can see very good agreement with the core one, which is the red line in both uh, diagrams. There is some deviation with the core four, and uh, what this, we anticipate this is the design in of the mode was the exact geometry expected, the design geometry. And if you take a look at the diagram, the experimental results were done, obviously, on a real-world fiber, where there is variation in the core, the air holes. So if we take a look at the inset on the right figure, you can actually see there is some 
non-uniformity in the air holes. So this structure is not the exact design uh, that was specified. So a bit of deviation is uh, to be expected. The second example we're going to take a look at is a heterogeneous trench-assisted rated index multi-core fiber. On the left, we can see the refractive index profile, and as it from a cross section, along with all the key parameters. In the middle, we see the actual values of those parameters, and on the right, we actually see this particular design. So we, we can see there's three different core types, and they are interspersed uh, along this structure. Again, in, in a bit of a hexagonal pattern, but the inner uh, thing is the combination of four, four, five. So this is from the this paper here specified by uh, Tu Long and Saito in 2016. So if we take a look at the crosstalk as reported in the paper, which is on the right, and from the calculations based on Opti mode on the left, we again see excellent agreement between both the experiment and, and simulation, both in peak position, peak heights. And where the the drop-offs occur on these diagrams. The third and final example is a heterogeneous trench-assisted double-core uh, multi-core fiber. So this one's a bit simpler in its core positioning, but the actual core design is a bit more complicated. So you we actually see the the multi-levels of the the inner core, outer core, and then the trench, which is the refractive index profile on the left here. In the center, we see the, the actual parameters that were used for this design. So these would have been put in as parameters within OptiMode, and we would have been able to change them as necessary. And on the right, we see how the uh, the two different Core 1 and Core 2 designs are interspersed in ring. So this is from the, uh, the similar group, the two Saito, uh, Takanagi, and Matsuo um, out of, from Optics Express in 2014. And again, we take a look at the crosstalk of this particular design, and we can see excellent agreement in in comparing the different uh, crosstalk between these different LP modes, as as presented in both the experimental and the simulation results. At this point, I, I will hand it back over to Ahmed. That concludes the the Opti mode. Uh, component of this uh, presentation. Okay, Scott, thank you. Um, just, okay, here you go. So now what we um, show here is a setup, an Opti system where uh, in, uh, in concept you can do simulate the effect of crosstalk produced uh, from core to core or from mode to mode. Uh, on the transmission or the system performance. Now the setup here, as you, as you see in the block diagram, we have two signals which uh, modulated uh, externally using a CD random bit sequence. And then the other part here is a, another laser which is also modulated here with another random uh, uh, CD random bit sequence. And what's happening here in the control, which I'm gonna show you in the live demonstration, you can control the, the wavelength of the laser here. So you can make it exactly at the same wavelength. Or, so you can assume that the two modes are uh, propagating in this, uh, two different modes uh, propagating in the same core. Or you can assume also the, 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 the modes are at different wavelengths. Uh, so you can control the, that as well. Uh, and then uh, the, the attenuator here controls the amount of the uh, signal which is interfering basically with the other signal uh, in, in, the, in the signal path, which is the actual signal we want to monitor. And then you transmit through the fiber, receive it, and then you uh, here you measure the bit error rate and the Q factor. So uh, the, the setup here, as you can see it in the block diagram, which I'm gonna now move into the um, live demo here. Um, okay. So this is my, my block diagram here in Optus system. As you can see, uh, there, is, um, uh, there is different uh, 
uh, setups here, but in principle, if you go to the main layout here, we created uh, two uh, parameters. You can add them up in, into the uh, uh, layout uh, uh, pop-up pop window. And one of these parameters is called separation, and the other one is called start. At this moment, as you can see here, uh, the laser, the signal laser is sitting at a start wavelength, uh, and the other one is sitting at the start wavelength plus the separation. So you can have two options. You can have the, the again, is the, the, the signal at the start. So you do evaluate here, you see it's 193.1 terahertz, and the other wavelength, which is causing the crosstalk, it's at the wavelength plus the separation. At this moment, in this example, we have the separation at zero uh, terahertz, so there is no separation between the two wavelengths. And now here, the attenuation, what we do, we, we control the, uh, we sweep the attenuation. So if, if we know exactly how much is the amount of crosstalk, we can monitor it here and set properly the amount of crosstalk in terms of power levels. And eventually, uh, these two signals, as you can see, modulated externally using uh, the seed random bit sequence, which are completely different, which means this is a completely different signal than that signal, which is coming from another either uh, another um, wavelength uh, or the same wavelength if, if it is from different mode. And then you transmit through the fiber here. As you can see, the fiber basically you set it up uh, like standard way. You have all these parameters of the length, attenuation, and dispersion as well as BMD, nonlinearity, you can include whatever uh, functionality in it. And uh, with that, you, you, uh, after that, you detected the signal, and then you look at the, the, the performance of the signal. So I, I did the calculation first step with uh, the uh, situation when, when, when we have uh, zero separation, as you saw, and you can look at the, let's say, for example, the Q factor here is 10.4, and bit error rate is like uh, 110 minus 25. Now, what we can do quickly here, you can just change the wavelength separation. So you have now two different, two different uh, wavelengths uh, propagating, and one of them is, is cro causing crosstalk on the other wavelength. And then you're supposed to expect that the performance would be uh, crosstalk would be less effective because the the the, uh, the, the signal is is kind of separated from the first one. And then now, if you run it, it's gonna be uh, I'm gonna run here the the uh, signal I'm sweeping again is, is the attenuation just to monitor the different situations. And it's gonna be finishing quickly here. Now it's at two out of 13. Uh, during this calculation, what we can see, um, let me move into the presentation again. Okay. So as you can see here, just to quickly talk about what is happening, uh, you can uh, you can control the the uh, multi-core fiber components, and you, you can co co crosstalk consideration in the Opti system. Okay, so this is simulation is almost done now. Okay. And now if you start to look into the, the signal here, you can see the signal is now uh, have almost the same, the same uh, uh, like the, the bit error rate here is 2 to 10 minus 16. And then you can look at the effect of, of um, the, the attenuation. So let's see if you have zero attenuation here. So there is the signal is very high going into the the uh, signal and they can monitor also the signal here the separation is 100 gigahertz same amplitude of the signal you can look at the pulses here as well and you can see if you zoom that the signal levels going into the fiber is the same level uh, you can have double here as well and then uh, if you change the attenuation you start to uh, control the in principle, crosstalk between the two signals. So for example, if you go, the attenuation right now is it's 5 dB, you start to get less crosstalk, and 3 d here, 10 dB is again less talk, and so on. So let's say, for example, at 8 dB here, which is around 30 dB crosstalk, uh, you have about bit rate, our cross uh, Q factor is about 10, uh, 10, um, uh, 10, and the bit rate is around 10 minus 25. So the idea again here is this kind of representation. Uh, what you can do, you can design 
uh, the um, uh, the multi-core, multi-mode, or single-mode uh, design of your uh, fibers. Take the crosstalk parameters and then enter them into the here by controlling the attenuation. You you can control the wavelength as well as you can control the uh, the wavelength as well as you control the separation the, between the, the the lasers and then you can do the transmission and you, you can uh, evaluate your system in terms of performance. Now, if you go here under default component property default and you go optical fiber here, you see the components which is the multi-core fiber bending, multi-core fiber pitch uh, control, and multi-core fiber. Uh, in, in, if you have uh, to look into the multi-core uh, fiber designs. Uh, so if if you start another uh, setup here, you can uh, control. Basically, you can set up the the parameters here, the structure parameters, the bending radius range between, let's say, for example, minimum value 0.3, maximum value 0.5, and the step size. And then once you run this uh, component, set up all these parameters, you 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 calculate it, and then you look at the performance through the component view here so you go component view and then you go to the 2d and you look at the the performance here so the performance here uh, in this graph you can download the uh, the results you download the graph so if you double click here you can save export the data export the curve and so on so you have lots of flex flexibility in the, the way how to to uh, process the data and and control it now, going back again here into the help button here, if you do the help, uh, then you can get the, all the details about the, the way is the calculation is being done and the example of the result and, and the reference is being used in the, in the theory of, for this calculation. Okay, so let me move here to the presentation again. Okay, now, uh, uh, what we can say here is at the end is if you like to try the Opti system and Opti mode uh, software, what you need to do is you can go to OptiWave uh, website and then under downloads here, you can have 30 days uh, evaluation free trial. And during this process, you can evaluate the software. And if you have any questions, uh, you can send them to support. Uh, once you download software, the software is usually located under program files, OptiWave software. Uh, there is a forum here also you can add up your question as, as you uh, in case if, if, um, if you have any question on on the on the software or on any anything you need to support to for support as well uh, at the end here I'd like to thank you for attending the webinar you may contact us uh, through these emails and if you have a question we are open for questions now thank you So Scott, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, so we have a few questions here. Uh, can we observe the nonlinear distortion as self-phase modulation, polarization mode dispersion, et cetera, uh, for this course? Yeah, so what is, uh, like, I mean, in the, in the fiber models, you can add up whatever nonlinearity or dispersion or polarization mode dispersion uh, is, is like regular regular fiber design the only thing is here we add up in the transmission experiment is the crosstalk which means uh, the effect of another uh, signal transmitted at the same time uh, at, with with the signal so if you have for example this uh, signal or this mode is at different wavelength or at the same wavelength so you can control it and then also you can control the uh, the level of the signal added up to the to to the in, uh, like desired signal Okay, uh, another question it says here, the nonlinear effects are being considered in your model. Yeah, we, we consider all the nonlinear effects in the model. So uh, if you want to add self-phase modulation, cross-phase modulation, uh, if you uh, wanted to add other nonlinear effects is all, you can have them. So I can, I can show you here actually in Optis system, you have optical fiber components because in, in the in the example uh, in the example which we did here, you control the fiber uh, model which you wanted to use. You can have a unidirectional or you have a bidirectional component, so you can have the bidirectional, and also you can control, as I mentioned, the all the uh, 
uh, effect. So if dispersion, you can have a constant dispersion or uh, you can have a dispersion uh, varying across uh, different, uh, the, 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 say for example, you can launch more than one wavelength at the same time. Uh, you, you, your system, you can modify it like you can allow more than one signal, let's say, to transmit it. It's not only two signal if you wanted to do that. Um, now, in, in terms of the, uh, the BMD here, you can also control it. Uh, in terms of nonlinear, you can have cell phase modulation, cross phase modulation, control the nonlinear effect. You can add up Raman if you wanted, uh, as well as you can add up the relay scattering, Brillouin scattering. So all of these physical characteristics uh, of the fiber can be can be addressed in the in this example. So um, there is a question about the recording. Uh, so we we once the uh, webinar is is done, we gonna send uh, later on uh, within today or tomorrow the uh, the recording to all attendants and the uh, and the registered uh, user registered uh, people. There's another question here. It says, apart from crosstalk, is it possible to calculate the different group delay uh, between the cores in the heterogeneous multi-core fiber? Okay, so in this example, as you can so see here, it's a, we use a multi uh, single mode fiber. However, you can put also multi-mode fiber where you should be able to, to calculate the uh, group delay difference. Um, can the program link with Zmax both uh, taking uh, fiber output to the input of the fiber. Um, I'm not sure, Scott, do you have, can you comment on this integration uh, of Vmax? So opt OptiMode would not uh, take it as an input because the whole point of OptiMode is to calculate the mode. It doesn't do propagation, so that I guess that question would be more for system. But OptiMode can generate uh, what, what a, a, a mode profile. So you can export the actual mode profile, which could uh, be converted to uh, Zmax. We do have a conversion for uh, code five within the OptiTools products. Um, it, it wouldn't be difficult. You could probably do it from within uh, from within scripting to uh, export. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So another question is: Can we do a few mode uh, designs? Definitely. I mean, this is. Uh, uh, something we we can we can design in uh, yeah, for few modes or single mode operation. Uh, so the the fiber uh, characteristics is can be can be uh, based on your design. You bear, bear based on parameters of the fiber you are using. Uh, now, uh, can the other part of it? The question is: Can be model for fiber amplifier or fiber lasers now? Opti system itself, it has a capability to do uh, designing uh, optical amplifiers uh, using different dope materials, as well as uh, for fiber lasers. Uh, so there is lots of examples in the example library. And if you have any other question, you might send it directly uh, to, to, to myself uh, through the email, which you see in here. Um, and then we can, we can discuss it further. Um, Ahmed, I'd like to just add in, uh, I did double check. We actually do have a ZMAX converter. I knew we had the code five. I couldn't remember whether we had the ZMAX or not. Uh, yeah. We do have a ZMAX converter. So the, the field profile that is calculated by OptiMode uh, could then be exported and converted to a, a, to a ZMAX format. Okay, thank you. That's my recall, but they are okay. Um, okay, how can I measure the distance of the fiber? Uh, now the distance in the fiber, there is an opt a component on optical fiber. It's called uh, OTDR. So the OTDR component you should be able to use to kind of simulate uh, the uh, the calculation of a distance of the fiber. So you can uh, emulate the kind of actual system uh, if you if you if you have um, let's say certain length, and then you can see if you can uh, you would be able to. To, to measure the signal received and so on. You can put the conditions uh, and so on. So if you have a question, again, please just send it to me and we can discuss further here. But definitely we have kind of uh, different uh, kind of schemes for sensors. So we have uh, different types of sensors in, in Opti system. Um, Ahmed, 
Yes. We have a, a number of questions here from one gentleman in regards to the maximum number of cores that we can handle and the distances between the cores. The Opti mode, because you're actually designing it, there's no theoretical limit. You just design it. I'm assuming those questions are in regards to Opti system. Yeah, in, in terms of number of cores, you can put any number of cores so in, in the design. So you have to enter the parameters. Uh, into into the uh, like the refractive index parameters and so on in the in the in the uh, component properties and you should be able to calculate for any number. Uh, there is no limitation for the calculation in Opti system. However, like as you said, in Opti mode you should be able to design it as well. There is I think is no limitation, right? Well, yeah, because you're actually you have full control over where those cores are placed, so you can do whatever you want with them. Okay. There is a question here about uh, interface with MATLAB uh simulink okay so um it's it's uh at this moment we have integration with matlab software so uh, uh directly to simulink we don't have any access at this time um uh, and um, i'm not sure if you would be able to address integration of simulink into matlab and then to matlab to opti system maybe this is an option uh to think about it um, but also, if you wanted to discuss further, we can discuss uh, in, in, in emails. We can exchange ideas. We are open to do that. Um, here, the question about the furthest distance you can design uh, pawn, WDM pawns. I mean, in, in principle, it's... Uh, uh, you, the, the simulation tools is it's capable as long as you will be able to uh, characterize the signal at the receiver should be okay. So you have all this uh, visualization from bit error rate uh, uh, and spectrum analyzers and so on and RF spectrum analyzer to characterize the signal qualitatively. Uh, if, if your signal quality is good and your receiver so receiver sensitivity is very high now you need to compare with practical parameters in in, in principle to be able to, to see the validity of your design uh, but if, in the simulation tool you should you have all the flexibility to to to, to kind of push to the limits uh, for the design um, I think it's they are talking about here. I think it's been answered. This is about the trial. Can we add real number of splices uh, and connector connections? Yeah, I'm not sure about the this is to which part of the questions, but if it is related to the OTDR, OTDR has a lot of flexibility. You can add up, you can add up. Uh, the number of splices number of connectors the type of reflections and all of these things so we are planning actually in the near future to make a, a webinar on this otdr component uh, we have a new software it's called opti instrument and opti instrument uh, we are uh, uh, capable of uh, communicating with the instruments uh, and we have different examples uh, demonstration using xfo uh, OTDR um, uh, uh, instruments or equipment and we compare these uh, measurements with Opti system components so we we were going to do a webinar in the near future about the OTDR and about sensing application on, on that part um, I think it's uh, um, Scott if you can answer the question about the if you can have a non-uniform distance between cores I would, I uh, yeah, it, it, it goes back to what i was saying before in the opti mode product at least it, you have full control the the best way to think about it is it's not a fixed model that you're changing you're building a model from the ground up so wherever the cores or you place the cores is, is perfectly fine the only theoretical issue is if if they're too close to get discretized so whether it's uniform or non-uniform distances has has no bearing on the product because what it's doing is it's fully discretizing the, the space that you've built 
So, so long as that space can be discretized, there's no problem. Yes, and there is a question here actually about also we did that. At, at, I think it's two uh, one webinar, two webinars about photonic crystal fibers designs using OptiMode and how to use these fibers for sensing applications. So uh, this is some these webinars you can access them actually from OptiWeb website. You can go to to to, uh, to webinars and uh, we talked about that. Uh, now, OptiMode is capable of, of uh, designing these kind of uh, uh, fibers, photonic crystal fibers. And I think it's got, uh, if you can also comment on it uh, a bit more, so elaborate on the, on the answer here, please. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else I could add on that. Uh, the, the webinars pretty much stand on their own in that regard. Um, the, 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 the VB script provides fairly extensive capabilities in terms of designing these things. If, if you can imagine it, you can probably design it. Okay, thanks. Uh, one question here about uh, experimental uh, data uh, for the multi-core fiber, I guess I would say. Uh, it's not clear, but um, at this moment, we don't have any experimental data done uh, on comparing optic system uh, calculation. And we are honestly looking into uh, collaborators who uh, would uh, have experimental uh, capabilities and uh, to collaborate with us on comparing the simulations with experimental uh, experimental data so we can uh, tune in, in case. Although, uh, as you saw in the webinar today, we compared the simulation tool with many uh, uh, experimental results in, in published papers and the matching were very good or excellent. Uh, so uh, it's still that part is we are still open for for any kind of collaboration. So uh, the question is the multi-core model is ready to transmission simulation. So in in the uh, at this moment uh, the, the, there is no direct um kind of extraction of the results from OptiMode to opti system which is something we are working on api to do that uh however still you can get the results and then put them into opti system to to do the simulation for uh, for transmission um i think it's this is kind of the last question here uh, I think it also it's almost the end of the hour. Uh, at the end, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who attended the, the uh, webinar. And then, as, I, as we said, we're going to pass the recording to all registered uh, people and as well as attended. Uh, uh, we appreciate your time. And thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.